living in us we see that uh, he he produces life you know he is life itself and um, gives life to whoever who's around him or in with him or connected to him we are uh, one with christ we are one with the lord and the holy spirit we are one spirit with the lord right we that, that is why we are uh, partakers of it. we are called we are partakers of the divine nature through these precious promises that have been given to us so um so we can expect god's spirit to produce life in us right to breathe life in us to all those areas in our lives where we feel that uh, there is you know um, uh, figuratively speaking you know we, we feel that it is dead right there is nothing moving there is nothing happening uh, it seems to have come to a standstill you know, maybe areas in our life maybe it is uh, some task some assignment some uh, some you know something to do with uh, a family member a relationship with a family member or someone else and and we feel that it's come to a standstill you know it's not moving but what scripture says that he who dwells in us the spirit of god who dwells in us produces life will give life to your mortal bodies and it's and and it it also implies that uh, for our mortal body you know our physical body it has uh, it has a uh, you know it has its limitations but the spirit of god who dwells in us he produces life you know, whatever the limitations are the weaknesses are he causes us to overcome that right? because he brings in his supernatural zoe god kind of life um in 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 our spirit right so we can so this morning as we pray uh we can pray that we will experience this uh, zoe god kind of life this overcoming life the life that gives life to our mortal bodies right so maybe experience that in our in our in our minds maybe experience that in our bodies in our physical senses in our physical organs and also emotionally as well uh, you know and also spiritually right like let's let's pray Father we thank you Lord that uh, you dwell in us Lord Father we thank you that your word well, that, that your word says that uh, that um, that the the body is dead because of sin sin because the spirit is life because of righteousness and Lord we thank you that it is you who dwell in us Lord this the holy spirit dwells in us Lord and uh, and Father we thank you that um, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in us now dwells in us and uh, the 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 one who raised Christ from the dead is is willing and able to give life to our mortal bodies and so i just pray father god right now uh, for those of us who are uh, facing any kind of uh, lord sicknesses or any kind of weakness in our bodies lord i pray lord for a fresh um, impartation lord for a, uh, that you would breathe life right now lord that your life will be experienced that your life that flows like a mighty river god the the life of the holy spirit um the presence the manifestation of the power and the presence of the holy spirit lord i pray that we will experience it right now in our bodies lord and we also pray for our minds father god we pray for our thoughts and imaginations yes lord i pray that it will be cleansed lord i pray that um, every um, negative thought or every every regret or any uh, thought of um, low self esteem and any thought of um, any stronghold any any bondage i i just pray right now that that will be uh, taken away that will be washed away by the, the by the river of life and lord i just so pray for a for a freshness in our spirit i pray that uh, that you who is life itself lord that will breathe life oh god um, and i just pray for a, for a new freshness for a renewed strength god um, for renewed fervor and passion lord to come upon us to come within us to be stirred up in us lord by the work of your spirit we thank you um that you're doing it we believe that you're doing it uh, even right now god and we can expect to see change lord in all these uh, aspects father god um and we can expect to see the breakthroughs receive breakthroughs in all these areas father god let your river flow god let your mighty river flow father god let your power be experienced father god in our bodies in our mind in our spirit lord and uh, everything else that we do father god in all human uh, lord earthly relationships in all tasks that we undertake lord in all um, lord the ministry that we do father god lord enable us to experience this power enable us to experience the life of the spirit hallelujah we thank you lord we give you all the praise and all the glory at this time in jesus matchless name we pray amen amen
Okay, so yeah, so Dave, I see a message that uh, yeah, you're able to access the. Uh, that's good. Okay, so um, today we are in discipleship in small groups. We are all, come to almost the end of this course, um, discipleship in small group, and uh, we're going to continue with uh, what we um, the last topic that we uh, saw um, in our last class about mentoring. Right. We're talking about raising up other leaders and uh, uh, we're talking about how we need to have, a, you know, establish a relationship. Uh, we're not about forcing people. We're not controlling people. We're not manipulating people. Um, so in line with that, uh, we're talking about mentoring and we're talking about uh, being a role model and developing others and raising them up to 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 go even beyond uh, you know, where we are, right, to go even further um, and beyond where, you know, the, the level at which we are ministering or um, um, where we are right now. It could be, you know, in in uh, typically, we, I mean, specifically, we're talking about small groups, we're talking about ministry, but uh, it could be in any uh, field as well, right? You're mentoring someone professionally, you're mentoring someone in uh, in any other area, right? So, um, so this is what it is. Uh, to mentor is to... Um, develop people and uh, we use another term like and that is spiritual parenting or spiritual fathering or mothering right <clears throat> like how uh, uh, like, uh, the lord himself says in second corinthians 6 and verse 18 the verse that we saw um that the lord says that i will be your father to you and you will be my sons and daughters and paul uh, in his dealings with uh, uh, the, his team, right, with Timothy, Titus, um, you see that uh, he's like a father figure, and right? he um, he is <clears throat> uh, he addresses, and, and not only Paul, but then others who address um, the uh, the the ones whom they are actually um, taking care of or discipling. Uh, they they address them as uh, as as children, or they, they have this whole picture of a, of them being like a father to them. Right? So it could be, you know, we can say a father or mother. Right? We see that aspect of it. So so we also saw last class about spiritual teacher or instructor and the difference between uh, you know uh, that uh, being an instructor and a, a spiritual father. Right. So one thing that we uh, need to understand that <clears throat> that the Lord God Himself uh, is our example role model. Okay, so this fatherhood, as we call it, it comes from Him. Right? He is the source. Right? Um, let me just share the notes. Okay, so. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Um, for this reason, I bow, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Right. So, um, so since God's nature is to be a father, and what a father would do to his children, and we are his children, <clears throat> we relate to God as our heavenly father. And we have his nature with us, in us, right? The same nature. Therefore, we see that as we build others, as we help others, the same nature of fatherhood or parenthood flows from us, right? So the spiritual, being spiritual parents, spiritual father, spiritual mother uh, is, uh, is, a, is, is from the fatherhood of God, right? Well, so when we say, you know, spiritual father, spiritual son, spiritual daughter, you know, uh, we need to do it in a healthy manner. We need to do it in a manner that, <clears throat> you know, where people are not uh, completely, you know, attached emotionally, that um, they, they are not free to be themselves, or they they are, you know, in, in some kind of a emotional bondage, you know, we're not talking about putting any constraints or restraints on people, right? But to allow people to grow up 
and to be who they've they meant to be. And also, we're not saying that um, you know you need to be you need to be subservient to me. You know, you need to honor me. You need to you know do all that. No, uh, the spiritual father or the spiritual mother serves so that the person uh, moves from immaturity to maturity, right? from ignorance to a place of understanding. Right? So Paul uh, refers to Timothy. You know, we, we see that he, uh, he says, Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Right? We know that in the natural, that it, that was, it was not so, but in the spiritual, it was so because he would, he, he, he traveled with Timothy and he instructed Timothy, and his whole life example was right before there, uh, before Timothy's eyes to see and to observe and to, you know, to understand, to follow, right? Uh, so Paul writes in several places, you know, in Corinthians and then in Galatians, um, Thessalonians. We see that um, uh, that he refers to himself as a father, right? So when we say, okay, who is the spiritual father or mother? You know, it's not the person who just brought the gospel or shared the gospel and because of whom we, because of whose ministry we, you know, we got saved. Right? But it is someone who continues to journey with us or walk with us, right, who brings us from immaturity to maturity. So that's the real uh, father or mother, spiritual father or mother, right? So, so it could be a uh, you know, it, it's not necessarily someone who just share the gospel. It's not someone who's an authority figure in some organization. And it's it's not that, right? It is someone who who raises up a person, who builds up a person, and who builds us up from immaturity to maturity through their, through their instructions, teaching, through their life example, right? Through their walk with us, through their relationship with us. You know, they bring us to a place of maturity. So that's a true spiritual father or a mother. So what are some characteristics? So when we when we look at these characteristics, we see that, okay, there are here there are certain things that I can do. Here are certain things that I should not, right? Um, I should not be doing. So uh, so we understand that. Uh, we learn this. Okay. So when we look at Judges five, we learn something about Deborah. Okay. The inhabitants of Judges 5, 7 to 9, the inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose, that I arose a mother in Israel. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? My heart is toward the governors of Israel that offered themselves willingly among the people. Bless ye the Lord. Okay, so we see uh, several things here, and uh, from Deborah's example, and also um, you know uh, several others. So here are some uh, uh, you know uh, a collection of um, instructions or some things that we can truths that we can look at to see who is a true spiritual father or a mother. Okay, so we see that one who is involved in the life. One who's involved. Okay. So what does involved mean? Involved means to to be engaged, right, in the life of uh, another person. Uh, so, which, uh, and there's a right way to be involved and the wrong way to be involved. Okay. So we, to be an integral part of the person, to maybe to spend time, to participate in, uh, in their life, right? In some aspect of their life. So that means, you know, you're involved. There is communication. There is uh, uh, some relationship. There is uh, time spent. Right? All this needs to be there uh, if we are to be a true spiritual father or mother. Like it's not a very, it's not a professional interaction and then you leave it at that. Right? It goes beyond that. Okay. So, secondly, one who is able to correct, rebuke, discipline, and guide. Okay. Because uh, if we are, if we cannot, or if we are not allowed to do that, or if we hold ourselves back from 
correcting or rebuking or disciplining, then we are not really being spiritual sons and daughters. Okay, so a spiritual father, now we're not uh, uh, being spiritual fathers and mothers. Sorry. So, so a spiritual father or the mother is able to not just interact superficially. You know, it's not just hello, how are you? Did you? You know, uh, how are things with you? You know, the weather is nice or the weather is bad or talk about politics and talk about sports or, or even talk about church. Oh, that's a nice message. It's, it's, it, it goes beyond that. You know, it's just not talking about skills, abilities, giftings. I say, oh, that was, that was wonderful how you ministered or that was, uh, you know, just go below the surface, beyond the superficial, right? And to instruct the inner man. Okay. Whatever adjustment, alignment, correction. Okay. So being able to go beyond the superficial. Right? And it's also, uh, there's also one who goes beyond a casual relationship to a more meaningful relationship. Okay. It's, it's not just a casual thing that uh, the person is involved in it's 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 much more it's deeper it's uh, it's much more meaningful so what uh, they do is hold the person accountable for their conduct for their behavior for their growth for their ministry right so a spiritual father does that right or a spiritual mother does that um so they influence that person in a positive manner, right? in a positive way. So, so this this happens. It's an ongoing thing which happens. Okay. Next, we see that it's a person who deals with the character more than the gifting. I think we need to understand. You know, it deals with your character more than your gifting because we know that. Uh, you know, to be Christ-like in character is very important. It's it's critical because it's the character which it's just like the wine skin. We we've, we've learned that you know it's it's like the, it's the character is like the wine skin which holds the anointing. So character is very important. Character is what gives longevity to life and ministry. Uh, if there is no if, if the character is not strong, it could you know it could hinder the work of ministry right everything would come down or everything would break down uh, if there's no character it can it can affect any other area you know it can affect the marriage it can affect the you know if a person is working the profession it can affect uh, and definitely it will affect the ministry so character is very important so so here's a person here's a spiritual father or a spiritual mother and they are able to deal with the character more than the gifting, right? So the gifting, you know, whether it's the spiritual gifts or some natural talent or ability, it's something which is put on display. You know, it is something which is very, very visible to, to the world outside, to everyone. You know, it's, it's visible. You can see it. You can hear about it. Um, it is there, put on display. But the character is like the foundation, right? It is be below the surface. It is uh, it is something that that is hidden, but which is very very necessary for the for the building. Just like how important the foundation is for the building, character is very important. It, it could be hidden, but it is it is internal. It is necessary, right? So, um, so uh, someone who focuses on character. And not just talk about the gift, and not just you know applaud the other person, compliment the other person based on the gift, but really uh, address the character, right? Okay. It's also one who does not mind that a spiritual son or daughter exceeds and goes beyond them. Okay, so this means that uh, you know, they can overtake you, or you know, just like in the natural, you know, a father or a mother normally 
um, would not feel threatened if the son or daughter, if their children are doing well, you know, maybe the, the father or the mother only studied till, let's say, 10th standard or 12th standard. And if the children are able to, you know, go beyond that and get an education, you know, maybe get into college or get into, you know, do a diploma or whatever, um, then the parents are, you know, extremely proud. They're very happy. Hey, my son and daughter is is going beyond what I was capable of, what I did in life, right? So, uh, so also a spiritual, a true spiritual father or mother will not be threatened, will not feel insecure when the person whom they are helping, whom they are developing, whom they are mentoring, goes beyond them, like does very well. It has a better ministry, maybe has a you know has a wider impact and influence. Um, well, they are actually happy. Okay, the one of the examples that we see is uh, you know in John chapter uh, fourteen, right? John chapter fourteen and verse twelve. The Lord Jesus, you know, says this: "Is most assuredly I say to you." He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do, and greater works than these he will do. Okay. Now, uh, you know, it's a mind blowing verse. You know, how can there be works that are greater than what Jesus did? But the Lord Jesus says very specifically, you know, there will be greater works that the person who believes in me, he will do. But you see, you know, uh, but uh, I just want us to focus on the fact that, you know, he is, he's absolutely okay with that. Right? The greater works. He's absolutely okay that a follower of the Lord Jesus, a believer of the Lord Jesus, if he's if he goes beyond the works that he did, the greater works, in fact, that is what Jesus wants. Right? That is what Jesus wants from those who who are following him, who are believing him. So that's the heart, true heart of a, of any person who's a spiritual father or a mother. That the spiritual sons and daughters will you know, will go beyond. There's no question of envying. There's no question of jealousy uh, like Saul had about David. There's no question at all. You know, whatever be the accomplishments, they are there to be happy. They are there to uh, applaud them, recognize them, and be happy about it, right? Okay. Next one says, one who rescues from a place of abandonment and gives a spiritual home giving you an identity, name, and sonship in the house. Okay. So that's the thing. Uh, one who takes us from a place of abandonment. Maybe there, you know, someone is abandoned, someone is uh, uh, in a very bad phase of life, like maybe financially, maybe spiritually, maybe, uh, you know, relationally, right? Completely broken, completely shattered. But the true spiritual father or mother uh, is willing to take that person and uh, and and bring that person home home meaning you know spiritual home um, so <clears throat> and give that person that the identity that they require the assurance that they require and uh, and that place of sonship or that adoption right. So a true spiritual father or mother does that. Okay. And also a true spiritual father or mother is one who sees and understands the future and trains you for it and releases you for it. Okay. So first of all, to see, okay, what is this person capable of? Understand the potential that is there in the person. Sees the future. Right? Uh, the, and one way is to, to ask God, Right. What is the plan? What is the future? And what are the plans of God for this particular person? Right. What is the plan? What are the plans of God for the individual? And to and to train and to fashion the person according to it, rather than saying, "Okay, uh, he or she needs to be just like me," or "He or she needs to be, you know, uh, like this." Uh, you know, some people actually want others whom they are, you know, mentoring to be like, to be just like them. Or, you know, to be, they have a certain picture and say, okay, 
certain image and say, okay, this person needs to be like that because I was not. You know, sometimes even in the natural, you no know, parents do that. Oh, I could not do this, or I. I, I could not accomplish this, but my son and daughter, I want my son and daughter to accomplish this. Okay, it's it, So they, they're not mindful of the children's, um, you know, God's plans for their children or the abilities of the children, the gifting of the children, what the children are interested in and so on. So, but they just want to force them into a place because, you know, they did not accomplish certain things, but they want them. And, for them, it'll it'll seem like an accomplishment because the children are accomplishing that. Okay, the very things that they could not accomplish, right? So, so which is bad, right? Forcing, putting them in a place where, you know, they uh, which they are which they are not passionate about, which they are not gifted in. Um, so you know, it could be you know putting them in a course on a profession. Uh, or even an area of ministry. You know, some people make the mistake of saying, okay, I've dedicated this person for the Lord. I've dedicated him or her for ministry. Like some parents do that. Um, well, what if that the person, you know, is uh, God wants that person to be like Daniel or Joseph? Right? Yeah, dedicated to serve the Lord, but in a in a completely different area, like maybe govern, government or in administration of, of a big uh, organization. Right, where God wants that person to be a to be a minister and uh, to be uh, you know to fulfill the plans of God. So, so, so uh, a true spiritual father or mother will will not force, but will will actually discover like what is the potential of this person, what is this person capable of, what are God's plans, what's designs for this person, and then you know equip, train and even stir up the gifts, activate, release those gifts, and release the person uh, into it, or commission them at the right time. Okay. So having said all that, we need to know that there are no perfect fathers and mothers. Like, spiritually, we can make mistakes, but when we make mistakes, we just need to acknowledge that we've made a mistake and keep going, because we are also works in progress. We are also prone to make mistakes. Right. So the thing is, don't be afraid to make a mistake because sometimes we we don't want to do anything adventurous or anything out of faith because we don't want to make a mistake. But the thing is to learn from the mistake and avoid it the next time. I right? don't make the same mistake. Right? Mistakes, I uh, like this. Mistakes are like knives; they either cut us or serve us, depending on whether you hold them by the blade or by the handle. Okay. Now let's look at some lessons from uh, Paul and Timothy's, uh, you know, relationship, like a spiritual father and a spiritual son, right? So Timothy, Timothy, uh, sorry, Paul writes and he says to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, okay, grace and mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord, Second Timothy chapter one and verse two. Okay. So we see, first of all, some things that we understand. How did Timothy come into the picture? Okay. How did Paul meet him? You know, when we, when we, and what happened after that? So we're just going to take a quick look at that, and from that we can understand that yes, you know, these are some principles that we can, we, we ourselves can put to practice, right? You know, when as we are raising up others as we are raising up spiritual sons and daughters. Okay, see, now we are using these terms, spiritual father, spiritual son and daughter, just for us to understand. Okay, But in real life, in uh, you know, maybe in church and ministry, it's best not to use those things, you know, to go and say, okay, this is my spiritual son or this is my spiritual father. You know, it's, it, you don't have to do that. Right? You don't have to... You know, like put a title, but actually we can just do the job. Okay, do the, the I mean, carry out the responsibility of a spiritual father, carry out uh, or uh, or the accountability of a spiritual son, a spiritual mother, a spiritual daughter. Right. So you don't have to put those labels. And I know you know in churches, in ministries, the, you know it, it happens. Right. They, they say that, they do that, 
and many times they you know they use it in you know they do it in the flesh you know or maybe out of pride uh and uh, you know they they just want to drop those names in order to you know make those connections and networking etc now we don't have to do that you and i don't have to do that right we just have to carry out the responsibility uh, we don't have to go around saying that's that's my spiritual son that's my spiritual daughter right okay so let's look at uh, certain things that happen in paul and timothy's uh, you know uh, life okay first of all we see uh, in uh, acts chapter 16 and that's where we read about Uh, Timothy, um, uh, this is, in this version, it's uh, it's slightly, it's I think it's Old King James. So let me just read from uh, New King James. So we're looking at Acts sixteen and the verses one to three. Okay, Acts sixteen verse one to three. Then he came to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. He was well spoken of by the brethren who were, <coughs> sorry, who were at Lystra and Iconium. Uh, Paul wanted to have him go with him, and he took him and circumcised him, because of the Jews who were in that region, for they all knew him, knew that his father was was Greek. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah sorry so um so paul is just on his missionary journey and uh, you know after coming through syria and cilicia uh yeah you know, this is the second missionary journey right from antioch and he's coming he's coming along with barnabas and when he comes to this place this twin cities of derbe and lystra and uh, he notices a follower of the lord a disciple of the lord who was there and uh, his name is timothy and uh, he seems to have had a good testimony among the believers and it says here that he was well spoken of by the brethren who were there and uh, and you know i'm sure there must have been good believers or you know people of good reputation but then somehow um uh, paul felt that this 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 is uh, timothy was someone who's meant to go with him right uh, and so he he asked him to go with him and uh, and then he he also uh, you know uh, uh, so we so we understand that okay this there could be a divine orchestration divine uh, you know connection that go, that god might set up in our lives right and uh, we need to be uh, sensitive and obedient to that right sensitive in the sense yeah oh, okay i i'm aware in my spirit that this is what uh, you know this is something that i need to do uh, to be a spiritual father or you know where i come and say i i feel that okay i need to be accountable to this person right? as a spiritual <clears throat> i need to grow and uh, you know this person uh, whatever uh, you know life example or teachings and everything you know i can grow so um so you know to be sensitive to that to be aware of that to be mindful of that as the lord leads right the second thing is also to be obedient you know to be sensitive to one thing is one thing but to but to take that step of faith and obedience <clears throat> like paul did like paul okay he was he noticed timothy and he was well spoken of etc he you know found out obviously about his family and you know it talks about his mother being jewish father being greek and so on but he needed to obey he needed to take that the next step right of approaching asking saying would you be interested in you know serving alongside so he did that he was obedient right then secondly <clears throat> there seemed to be a special bond in the sense you know he refers to himself as his own son his beloved son so uh, um, a, you know a special 
relationship of friendship and uh, and almost you know like a father son kind of a respect mutual respect and honor and and also a closeness right so we see a special bond we also see a special uh, closeness and transparency you know when we say transparency that means that uh, um paul is open about his life okay whatever he went through there was nothing that he would hide like some of the difficulties some of the good things that happened everything was open for you know as timothy traveled along with paul it was open for him to see right if you look at second corinthians second sorry second timothy 3 10 and 11 um so uh, let me uh, just read. okay um this is 10 and 11 says uh, but you have carefully followed my doctrine okay manner of life purpose faith long suffering love perseverance persecutions afflictions so he lists down a few things and he says you have carefully followed okay you have carefully followed what carefully followed my doctrine so my teaching whatever i have been ministering you have carefully followed that you observed that you followed that you also carefully followed my manner of life the way i live my life you have seen it you observed it okay so which means his the way he the, whatever he did the choices he made um how he responded to certain you know certain situations how he responded to difficulties how he responded to you know uh certain challenges it was all there open for timothy to see right so manner of life purpose okay what was paul's purpose what was his his vision in life i'm sure he would have shared it over and over again and also timothy would have seen it um then what was paul's faith like you know when when things were difficult what was his faith you know did he did he just te- speak about faith did he just teach about faith and not really you know have faith when it really mattered you know all that uh timothy could see could see that he was a man of faith you see could see that okay there were difficulties and then here's this here's this man he's he's actually doing what he taught right then long suffering patience uh love perseverance persecution afflictions all the difficulties you know it says uh, which happened uh, persecutions afflictions verse 11 which happened to me at antioch at iconium at lystra what persecutions i endured and out of them all the lord delivered me so he's seeing the persecutions the difficulties the imprisonments <clears throat> the hard uh, physical discomfort all that timothy has seen he has observed and he has followed paul to see that and also he's seen that how the lord has delivered paul out of all these things out of these persecutions out of these uh, afflictions uh, whatever he endured and how the lord delivered out of them all okay, so he has seen that um so so Paul was very transparent he didn't hold back he didn't try to you know portray that he was if he was if he was weak if he was um, you know if he was imprisoned and if he felt tired well he didn't pretend to be not to be that, right so timothy saw it and he also there were in uh, uh, you know from timothy, from paul's side there was also you know specific instructions he would give uh to timothy right which was something which was beneficial for him um like uh, we, we see it over and over again he would encourage him you know first timothy chapter 1 and so, sorry second timothy chapter 1 verse 6 he would say therefore i remind you to stir up the gift of god which is in you through the laying on of my hands so there was a specific instruction to timothy to uh to to use the gift which was which was given to him <clears throat> by the when paul minister through the laying on of hands 
and uh, he's encouraging him and he's saying verse 7 and you know, god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind um you know several other places first timothy chapter 1 1 timothy 1 and verse 18 this charge i commit to you son timothy according to the prophecies which were made uh, over you that by them that you would wage the uh, good warfare right um so he is uh, is giving a specific instruction these prophecies were made use them these prophecies are concerning you it is a prophecies about you so with that you wage the good warfare go into battle with these prophecies go into battle with the word of god when things come against you i use this use the specific words of prophecy the uh, which were which were declared pronounced over you you know this is what god said that you will be this is what god said that you will become now you take those and fight the good fight okay so he gave specific instruction he also communicated encouragement exhortation correction he prophesied over over timothy as well now you know all this we are seeing to understand how paul was like a spiritual father to timothy okay so we are learning the same thing okay which means that we in our spiritual fathering or mothering we can also do the same thing we can make sure that we are transparent we can make sure that you know we are sensitive to god orchestrating it and bringing certain people whom god wants us to lift up god wants us to um you know uh, make strong strengthen their lives um through whatever he has taught us through through our life example right so we see that so he was also communicating you know he was uh, speaking to him he was uh, encouraging him he was exhorting him and also at the same time he corrected right so um first timothy um, chapter 6 if you can look at verse 12 um we see paul is encouraging him right he's saying fight the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses so paul is you know saying that you know uh, fight the good fight of faith don't give up he's encouraging him um then the other thing is to also bring in correction now you know when paul says you know i remind you to stir up the gifts okay he's uh, he's exhorting him he's encouraging him he's also reminding him that he god has not given us a spirit of fear so whatever fear that you are feeling you're experiencing when you want to minister in these gifts uh you have to discard that fear okay so he's bringing in that uh, encouragement and also is pointing out some things that timothy is not doing right uh he, pointing out something that he's not doing so he uh, uh he's he's saying okay this is what timothy uh you need to get into this you need to discard your fear okay uh so far you've not been you know been able to do that or you're not have not been doing it but this is what i want you to do in other words right he is is saying this so um so so we learn that we need to we cannot hold back correction but we need to do it in the right way in an honorable way okay so correction by itself is helpful okay correction by some somebody's you know doing the wrong thing somebody's headed towards danger right we would correct the person we would warn the person right because we don't want them want their life to be destroyed however we just need to do it in an honorable manner so that is where we you know struggle right okay we'll stop here and then we'll we'll come back and we'll look at the rest